So we're at Lee and Lee's suite now at Computex 2019. And we're, we've got a couple of cool things. There's some cases, of course, but probably the most interesting thing for a lot of you is going to be a total prototype right now. And this is just connecting fans so you can daisy chain them and eliminate all of the cables in between. So I, I think, and we'll need your feedback below, I think this is probably one of the more interesting products just because cable management as the RGB craze has grown has become a very difficult challenge. So we're, we're gonna be talking about this today. I'll apologize now for the echo. Apparently we're in an auditorium, but we'll, we'll walk through this. There's the O11 Dynamic XL that a lot of you have asked about. And then there's a Halo product case called the Odyssey. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. So for the fans, these are Concept Uni, and it's there's there's no roadmap right now there's no price and this is total prototype phase this is the third prototype it took about two weeks from pen to paper to now to get these made and the the outer materials cnc'd but i guess the more important part to know is that in between these two fans or maybe a better example the three spinning back here it's just one set of pins so they just sock it together and it's not pin to pin or pin to pad contact like the 11 dynamic xl is but it's socketable pins in between and then you can see there's one cable set over here that goes to an external hub and the the fan hub is then powered separately right now by a power supply so, which addresses a few, a few future concerns, like how much power can you really drive through uh, one connector with, you know, from a motherboard. So that, that's not an issue if it's externally powered, which this is. But these are connected in the middle. The wire routes outside within the frame, so it's protected. I'll go ahead and note a few things. The LEDs are really not that important right now. This entire design can change. So it's, it's really just a prototype. And I wanna highlight this heavily because Lee and Lee, unlike a lot of the other companies, goes out of its way to show complete prototype products. And the concern a lot of the big companies have with that is that if they show you a prototype, then you'll just hate it because it's not done yet. So give it a, give it a, a chance because really the only thing being demoed here is the lack of the cabling. The LEDs can change uh, and it really needs to go through some more testing and uh, refinement for like the amount of connection cycles those pins can sustain, stuff like that. So what Lee and Lee needs to know from you is are you interested in something like this? Because I suppose the theory is, if you have, as with a lot of the ARGB fans nowadays, you have two cables for a fan and you're running three fans to one radiator, for example, uh, now you're looking at six cables, which is an awful lot. So this reduces that significantly. It reallocates them a bit to the back of the case, but you do eliminate some of the cabling and end up wiring it within the fans instead, so it's out of the way. And uh, I guess that's, if it's affordable, it's a good solution for cutting down on the excessive cabling for RGB, and it's just kind of cool. And we have B-roll these socketing together, so they just slide together. So complete prototype, no roadmap at present, but let Lee and Lee know what you think about this below. And uh, as for the rest for this one, I think it's been connected up to six fans at least right now, and uh, in terms of being able to sustain the connection and the power through that many fans. And beyond that, it's probably not super relevant anyway, because I don't know any radiators that are that size. 120 millimeter at present, once things are working, if, if they can get to be working, it could be expanded. Uh, and I think that covers uh, Concept Uni. So that's one of the more interesting ones. Let's move on to, uh, I'll just quickly note these. We covered these at CES previously, and not a ton has changed, but uh, they've been finalized. So these are closed loop liquid coolers. The pricing is the final bit. We didn't know what that was at CES. So 240 millimeter CLCs are going to land at about $110 and they are going to be called Galahad. So Galahad 240s for these, uh, for some, I guess, Arthurian legends references. We'll skip Der Bauer stuff. We don't care about him. He'll be in a different video. Uh, we do care about him enough apparently for this, which is an O11 dynamic. And this case has gotten a lot of coverage from us. We actually, we're still using it at home, but the O11 Dynamic XL is one that was shown at CES as well. It's been more finalized now. Uh, for example, Der Bauer's name is shoved in the back corner, which is great because I can't stand that guy. I mean, he's just, man, he's 
just really good at overclocking and it drives me crazy. So Roman was involved on this case heavily for the O11 Dynamic, the original one. This is a scaled up version and uh, we liked the O11 Dynamic. It performs pretty damn well. I'll go ahead and give the recap of it if you missed the original dynamic coverage. Despite this being a glass front, there is side intake. So that makes up for the lack of front intake very well. Thermals, even when air-cooled, were good on the original O11 Dynamic. I don't know how well that scales up to this, but it really is just primarily a scaled-up version with some improvements. So it should, uh, in theory, the thermals should also scale up a bit as cases grow and the distance between the fan uh, to the cooler also grows. Then you have some pressure loss, but overall it should be fine. And Roman did a, a fantastic job on the original. So um, if you wanted a larger version, there it is. As for the changes, where the fans mount on the side, there are now some SSD sleds. So those will come with the case. You can remove them if you don't want them. And uh, if you're not going to be putting fans on that side, the SSD sleds are there. You can put them on display instead and then run your radiator to the top or to the bottom. So there's a bit more space now where in the original it was so tight that you start doing bottom mounted stuff. You run into the motherboard. Uh, not an issue with this version of the case. Uh, other than this, there's also a pre-routed set of cables in the back for the SSDs or hard drives. So that's kind of neat. There's a SATA and power pre-routed back there, which just is another cable management feature. The case should be about $200 once finalized. Uh, should be launching probably July, August area. So end of July is what we're being told right now. Could change. And then I guess another small change I've got noted. USB in the bottom, if you really care about that. Otherwise, ARGB LEDs are also present when they were not, uh, not previously present. So that's the O11 Dynamic XL. A lot of you have asked about it. You've got a timeline now, you've got a price, uh, and I guess if you just wanted a bigger O11 Dynamic, there it is. We'll try and look at that one and do a full review, see if anything's really changed thermally. I think it's mostly gonna be a feature review though on the new, uh, new features to it, because most of it's uh, going to be the same in terms of just structural integrity. And I guess more aluminum, is that accurate? more aluminum as well now. So the material quality or material type has changed. Uh, this case, Landcool 2, uh, we reviewed the Landcool 1 previously. It, it kind of has the, the look of it in the, the same line. Steel front panel, Landcool has traditionally been uh, a bit more on the affordable side, which this one is as well. Lian Lee is looking at pricing this maybe in the range of $90 or just under around 100. Um, there's a few interesting things. We'll have to show most of it in B-roll, but uh, the front panel is a pin contact, so you can pull that off and you see the LEDs cut out. So there's a set of pins and pads. There's the pads, there's the pins. Makes it very easy to, uh, to connect without cables, which seems to be a trend here today, cable management changes. The front has actually a pretty neat design for the fans. So we'll show B-roll this too. I'm not gonna change it right now, but this pulls out, you can flip it around. And the difference is it just allows you to sort of change how close the fans are to the panel. Uh, ideally, you want the fans to be basically just up against the panel for the best pressure. So you have higher static pressure to pull air in through, uh, especially where you have some limited venting on it. So you want them generally closer, but if you were doing something like mounting a radiator or had some other special project in mind, then being able to flip it and move them away from the front of the chassis is, is really not a bad feature to have. So that's the, the fan bracket for that. Um, the front panel has two small air in intakes on the left and the right, I guess. In total, it's probably about maybe like 30 to 40% of the width of the front panel, although then you lose some with, uh, with the cutout. These, I, th I well, I'll point this out. The front panel is obviously a prototype right now too, so it's taped over, that's not final. Uh, these, not necessarily final either, but that's the, the current approach to the dust filtration, um, so that may change. But the front panel is, uh, is really gonna make or break the airflow on it, as always. Internally, this is where it gets kind of more unique. So um, does this just pull down? Yes, yeah. magnet, very strong magnet. Okay, try not to break the Lee's prototypes today. Uh, so door swings out and then you've got another door down here. The hard drive cages are located here and these shift really easily from the front to the back, uh, although I think they're currently screwed in, but um, the hard drive cages move on a set of rails. Not that uh, unique, we've seen that of course before, but. Um, it, there's still some changes being made, like how accessible that screw is down there, because the screw currently, you kind of have to pull that out uh, to, to move it. But um, still in prototype phases there. There's a small cutout for air here, which being, let's see, depending on how close the GPU is to the bottom of the case, or if you mount a fan in the bottom on top of the power supply shroud, because there are two fan mounts there for 120s, 
um, that, that air intake might do something. We'd have to test it, though. Uh, the other side has the same method of opening. It's got two doors on it. And I think beyond that, we'll just have to keep an eye on it for final development and, um, and where the case goes. But 90 bucks puts it at one of the, the cheaper cases in the class that Lian Lee makes. The fan count is still in question. So uh, I suppose what we would be curious to hear is do you expect a case like this to come with fans, or would you rather it be a bit cheaper and buy your own fans? Because that's, that's, that's the toss up. Nothing's really changed here. T150, so this was at CES. The, the change is that this handle is now finalized and works a bit better. If you wanted a mini ITX box and wanted to have a handle on it, then uh, that's the enclosure. I'll point you to the CES video, though, if you want to see what this is, because we covered it pretty well there. And then the last product is the Odyssey, which is going to take the most time to cover. So we'll move over to that one next. Hey, everyone. So now Roman is joining me. Hey. And uh, he overheard me talking about him earlier, so came in the room and threatened me. It was quite scary, actually. <laughs> uh, so, so Rowan's got a channel, Der Bauer. Is that the correct pronunciation? That's correct. Are you sure? Partially. OK. Der Bauer is the channel, and you can check it in the link below. He's going to work on rearranging this case. It's fairly complicated by the looks of it, but it's the Odyssey for the name of the case. It's a prototype. We don't have a price yet. Um, this is a Halo product. It will be expensive. I guess I'll I'll put it there. I mean, it, like, look at the case. Right? More expensive, yeah. It'll be more expensive than average. Let's start. I don't know what's. <laughs> so I guess I'll explain the basics while you start with this. The yeah. case has two primary or two only configurations. There's this one where it's standing, and you've got a long ways up, and then this layout where we've already removed all the panels, and so it. I mean, obviously, it just flips the chassis, it rotates it. Um, this is not the same as the C700P or C700M where the entire case kind of inverts and flips. The C700P, when we worked with Cooler Master at uh, PAX, took like almost, I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours to do the full reassembly. And Roman claims he can do this in maybe like 15 minutes or something. We're not going to film the whole process because, frankly, I don't believe him, but it should be pretty quick uh, in theory. The cool things, though, I guess that we'll point out, the paneling, is one, very heavy, and two, uh, it bends. So to, to bypass one of the biggest limitations in tempered glass that we talked about in our tempered glass factory tours, which is curving the glass, Leon Lee is just going with two sheets, and then you bend it, and you end up with either like on this one, where it's bent out, or you get the flat panels, like the one I just picked up. So it's kind of a, an, an interesting gimmick, I guess, for the case and bypasses, again, low yields on curved glass, where some of the curved glass panels in the industry are like 30% yield, which skyrockets the price. What are you doing right now? You so just the removing the, the main, uh, the two main parts. So you okay. take off the, the top cover, basically. Typically, it's held down by, I think, 10 screws, but I removed some of them first right. to make it a little bit shorter. Yeah, yeah. And uh, same goes for the, the mainboard tray. It basically just slides into the case. It's also very, very simple. Did you work on this case at all? or? I gave some feedback, yeah. yeah. We, actually, we started talking about this on CES when he had the first like drawings and drafts, and then mm -hmm. we discussed some uh, like special features like replacing uh, or make those changeable so you can uh, rotate them for right. a better airflow or different visuals, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, just okay. some basic inputs. And uh, so what you have to do is you remove those two parts and then basically you just flip the case around. You can see where the, the feet are mounted currently. You have the cutout for the, for the button. So you just for the have front to, panel. Yeah, for the front panel button here. So you just remove this, this one Put it here, remove those feet, put them, put them on here, mm -hmm. mount this on the bottom, and mount the mainboard tray back on top where the other part was located. So it's actually very, very simple. Well, if you just Even see, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> we said earlier, how many engineers does it take to remove it? Because first, when we tried it first on this prototype, we couldn't get it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it was kind of stuck to those, and we're like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. But then Mary pointed out, maybe you have to slide it out. So yeah, and, and we then, failed both. And then you figured it out. So motherboard yeah. tray uh, with giant cutout, and then I guess I mean it's two configurations. Like ultimately, this is not some highly complex. Every panel is modular case. Like the chassis is yeah. still the chassis is still all riveted. Yeah, together. the mainframe is still the same, and right. then 
you have those two pan, uh, parts that go on top that basically fix the, the glass mm -hmm. sides to make them angled. That's not included on this case right now, so that's right. why we cannot really make that, but you can Im imagine it if you just well, and flip it a uh, bit. Aluminum pegs, I, th I think aluminum, just pegs for the, yeah. uh, for the panel mounting, which we actually saw being made at the Lee factory last year, not for this panel, but the same type of peg. So it makes it a bit easier to install. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's really the most of what we can say because there's no price right now. The release is maybe towards the end of the year. So it sounds like towards August potentially. And uh, it's clearly a Halo product. Let us know what you think of it in the comments. And I think after this, Roman and I are going to do a video on one of his new products. Yeah. So. Also, if you have any feedback, obviously leave it in the comments. Leon Lee is always open for suggestions, questions, whatever. Leon Lee is probably one of the most approachable companies yeah. for cases. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So leave those below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Check out Der Bauer mit Acht <laughs> on YouTube. And Roman, thank you for joining me. Thanks, man. We'll see you all next time.